All right, guys. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. It's Krista Watson here from Krista Quilts, and I am live from Las Vegas in my home studio. Today is Tuesday, September 15th, and it's 3 p.m. Pacific time. I'm getting ready for my Facebook live chat. We're talking about modern logs. So as everybody is getting ready and starting to jump on, I'll just kind of give everybody some time to join. If you are watching this broadcast later, you can still ask questions, and I'm happy to answer them. So as everybody's jumping on, just say hi and let me know what you're working on this week. It can be quilting related. It can be something other than quilting that's totally fine too but let me know what you're working on um what i'm working on non-quilt related many of you guys know we're building a pool and it went really fast in the beginning and now we're just kind of waiting we're building a patio and a pool we're starting to get patio furniture coming in and it's kind of down to the wire we've only got a um, maybe a few weeks left but it's scheduling the work and getting everyone to come so in the meantime i'm just hanging out in my sewing room quilting doing some secret sewing which of course i can't tell you about so i shouldn't even mention it because that's no fun but anyway welcome welcome so good to see you guys i love it i always love that michelle is like the first one here she should get a prize or something michelle for being the first one that's so exciting but today we are going to talk about modern logs which is the quilt behind me um i didn't have it for a couple weeks the last two broadcasts because it was at a local quilt shop they borrowed it for a while to sell kits and things and now they sent it back to me so you guys can see it let me know is this kind of clear can you hear me can you see me is it clear is it choppy um, I'm going to do something a little bit different today because, um, oh good, yay, you have 15 of the Modern Logs blocks done. That's Judy, wonderful. Um, I can't necessarily see your names right away when it comes up, but I've also got my phone, so I'm kind of double checking to make sure that I'm working and that you guys can see me and all that good stuff. But um, anyway, so it's been, it's been fun hanging out here in my studio, waiting for my pool to get done. Sometimes I work outside and I pretend that there's water in my pool, but it's, it's going to take a while. So anyway, we're talking about Modern logs we are on week three or step three for those of you on the quilt along if you're not making the quilt that's fine you can still pick up a couple tips and tricks I know some of you guys are still purchasing kits and still just ordering the patterns for me totally fine even though we're three weeks into it I will send you the pattern I will send you the fabric whatever you need to make this quilt and the nice thing about my quilt alongs they're hosted on my blog at kristaquilts.com but then I supplement in my Facebook group I share tips um, everybody can share their pictures I also do these Facebook lives I post these to YouTube so wherever you're seeing this information now or in the future and you have any questions you can always get a hold of me and you can also share pictures and the information I share publicly will remain indefinite so if you're starting this like six months in the future you can still go ahead and uh, make the quilt anytime oh all right uh binding let's see diane oh diane is here watching somebody just said they're binding a second quilt for delivery on thursday then you can start sewing modern logs excellent so even though this week week three technically we're already doing the quilt top already if you haven't even started cutting it's totally fine go back check out the previous quilt alongs. I am doing a Facebook live chat every week of this quilt along. I can't remember how many weeks I've got it scheduled, six, seven, eight weeks. I am doing a Facebook live chat to not only go over kind of what we're working on for the week, but also to be here for questions. So if you guys have questions related to modern logs, feel free to type them in. I will answer them. Um, today, like I said, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm actually going to show you a sneak peek of the blog post for this week that's gonna go up tomorrow. I've been trying to put up the blog post each Wednesday at kristaquilts.com. Today's Tuesday, so I'm kind of talking to you guys ahead of time, but I figured, you know what? I got the blog post done early. It's not posted live, but I'm gonna show it to you and share my screen just as an experiment to see if that works, if that helps you guys out. So good, sound good? Okay, so if you have questions during the presentation, Go ahead and type them up. I will start talking. I will share my screen in a minute. I'll talk to you. I'll monitor questions. And then when we're done with the presentation, it's not very long today, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes, we can have more chat. So anything you guys want to ask, it can be related to modern logs. It can be about quilting in general. It can be asking me my favorite type of ice cream. I don't care. <laughs> I'm here for you guys. Um, I, these modern logs chats have been a little shorter. We've only been going about 20, 30 minutes, but depending on you guys, um, I'm happy to stay, you know, longer if we need to. So yay, I'm so glad you guys are here today. That's awesome. Doris is here today. Lena, good. She made it. I know she was out running errands and she wanted to see if she'd be able to get uh, some Wi-Fi, which speaking of, those of you guys that are watching, 
while I'm doing it live, you're in my Facebook group. Later, I'm going to post it to YouTube. So if you're not watching it live and you go back, join my Facebook group and check out everyone's process. When you guys share your pictures, like Lena did this amazing version of Modern Logs with some of my brighter fabrics and she's doing her piece backing and thinking about quilting it. Anyway, I love seeing what you guys are doing. Everyone's sharing their blocks. Everybody's in different stages of completion and that's fine. I don't want to hold you back and I also don't want you to feel like you have to wait for me. So work at your own pace. Oh yeah, I, I can't wait until I get, I can't wait until I get to work in front of my pool. So I won't drift off on it for too long, but basically the way I'm setting my pool up is we have a backyard patio that we used to have a patio. We had to take it all down for the pool. They're putting it back up. It's going to be a nice shaded area off the house. So I can sit back there. There's plugs on the wall that we're adding and I can make it my outdoor office. So when it's like a nice fall day and it's too cold to get in the water, I can just sit outside, turn on the waterfalls of our pool and do computer work. Who knows? Maybe in the future I'll broadcast live outside. I can't wait. So it's going to be a year round access. We'll be able to use the pool year round. It'll be heated. We have good weather and I'll also be able to work outside as well because I'm just an outside girl. Somebody was asking me, why don't I put a sewing machine out there? We'll see. You never know. There's power. I may, I may drag out my machine. You never know. So anyway, it'll be, it'll be kind of fun. Um, welcome a couple more people. Anne's here. Um, uh, Michelle's here. Val's here. So good to see you guys. I'm just checking the comments. Sometimes I'll say your name and sometimes I won't. And that's only because I don't necessarily see your name along with a comment, but oh good. You're from Indiana. Uh, for the guys taking pics of my quilts for virtual show and tell, they love the bling quilt. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And that's just a little reminder guys, for those of you that have done previous quilt alongs you know i'm trying during the pandemic to do a quilt along like non-stop so as soon as we're done with modern logs we'll start on the next one i'm not really taking too many breaks in between because i want to keep you guys busy so if you're working on a previous quilt along like bling or optical illusion or any of the other ones i did earlier this year you can still ask me questions you can still share your progress please don't ever feel like you have to sew and get it done every single week you can definitely work at your own pace okay with all that intro i'm going to share my screen and um, and I'm going to basically show you my blog post that I'm putting up for tomorrow kind of as an experiment. So, yay, let's see if this works. This is always the fun part to see if what you guys are seeing is what I'm seeing. So anyway, I'm just going to give it there's like a little bit of a delay. I pull it up for you. And then when I look on my phone, I don't quite see it. So hopefully, hopefully you guys are seeing my uh, modern logs blog post. OK, I think that's working for you. Good, good, good. So. For those of you that haven't visited my blog in a while, just go to KristaQuilts.com. From there, you can get to everything. You can get to my patterns. You can get to my, my shop where I sell my fabrics and all that. But my blog is kind of basically my hub right there at KristaQuilts.com. So this is the post for tomorrow, and we're talking about sewing the quilt top. So the main thing I want you guys to understand when you're sewing these blocks together, you can decide the order that you want them to be, get laid out. Now, a couple of things I want to mention here right here is a very pretty picture of my quilt top all sewn together. But I'm going to scroll down. And again, I'm not sure if this is very clear. You'll have to let me know if you guys can see this or not. What I first started off doing when I first put this quilt together, I was going to make the small version. If you count quickly, there's 20 blocks in the small version. And I actually finished all the blocks. I was writing the blog posts ahead of time. I was doing the pattern, pattern testing and all that. And when I got to this point where I made this much, I thought, you know what? I want to make the bigger quilt. So this smaller version is the smallest size. There's three sizes in the pattern. This uses 20 fat quarters, 10 fat quarters of light, 10 fat quarters of dark. And so that's what I started off with. Thank goodness I had enough fabric because I got, um, I started making this quilt a couple months ago before the fabric had come out and I had a very limited amount to work with. Fortunately, I had enough and I basically at this point decided, you know what, I'm going to make the bigger size. So this is the smaller size. Compare it let me just scroll up a little bit for you. This is the neck size up, the throw size. This takes 40 fat quarters. And then there's one more larger size, which maybe in the future I might make because I need a quilt for my bed. The larger size is uh, 60 fat quarters, half light and half dark. Now that seems like a lot of fabric, like 40 fat quarters for this throw size. 
but in a couple weeks, you'll see that I use the leftovers up on the back. So that's the first thing. Don't stress too much if you have leftovers. The second thing is decide which size you want to make. And if you had your heart set on the smaller one and you want to make it bigger, you can totally make it bigger. The nice thing about this is even if you use one complete set of fabric and you're all out of it and you decide you want to make it bigger later, just pick fabrics in similar colors. Because it's so scrappy and so fun, you can always make it bigger. And you can customize this. I only have three sizes in the pattern, but in a nutshell, it takes about one fat quarters worth of fabric per block. So there's about 40 blocks in this size. You know, <laughs> don't count. I think there might be a few more, you know, <laughs> I don't have it off the top of my head here. But the first one is like 20 blocks and it's 20 fat quarters. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it's about 42 blocks total um, when you count like the partial blocks. But anyway, you're you're going to be able to have enough fabric so if you're like well i want to make it like one more row wide and so maybe that's like six or seven blocks then you need you know you need to make about six or seven more fat quarters and so you can customize it you can make your rows longer you can add more rows you can make your box bigger you can make your blocks smaller very very easy to customize when it's a very scrappy quilt so these i'm telling you now this while you get ready to sew your quilt top together, because again, you might've decided, well, I'm gonna make it one size, you get it up on your design wall and you're like, oh my gosh, this didn't turn out how I wanted, I wanted to make it bigger, not a problem at all. The other thing I'm gonna tell you is that in this, um, in this blog post here, I have a link to my design wall. Anytime you see anything on my blog and it's highlighted, you can click that link to go to the information. So somewhere in this text, I talk about um, putting the blocks up on my design wall. I don't know if you can see my arrow, but if you click here, this will take you. I'm just going to show you real quick. I'm going to open it up in a new tab. I don't know if that'll actually show you or not, or if I might have to skip over. But anyway, if you go to, if you click on it, and you go to the new tab that's underlined, a lot of times I highlight and take you to other tutorials. So you can actually get to my design wall tutorial if you want to learn how to make the design wall that I use for basting and photography and things like that. I highly, highly recommend having a design wall you can see it a little bit better here because that's going to give you room to work. Now, some of you may not have a design wall. You may have a design floor. You may have a design bed, you know, whatever space you have to lay out your blocks. The other thing that I recommend is that you take pictures with your phone so that you can figure out arrangements. It took me probably, you know, a good hour or two to arrange these blocks, move them around, figure out where I wanted them to go, you know, be happy with all the color layout. And so I did, I did that, which was totally fine. And I took pictures on my phone so that I could refer to it. Oh, wait, where's this block with the red outline or the pop of yellow or whatever? I could constantly refer to my phone over and over. But you know what? Even the way this quilt goes together, if you take a picture of it and you get lost and you shuffle your blocks around, it is still going to look good. So just keep that in mind. Um, the other thing I want to point out to you is that when you're putting this together, all this information is in the pattern. Notice this picture here of the larger version. This is a picture in progress. Notice that each row starts or ends with a partial block. That creates that offset look. Now, if you wanted to go crazy, you could like put a partial block on both sides of it and do something else. But this was kind of an offset look that I wanted to go for. So I, I put a quote half block. It's not really a half block. It's a little bigger than a half block. I put it on the top and bottom of each row, offsetting them. Um, be careful on how you rotate that block. The other thing I wanna tell you, which is super, super important, look at this picture carefully and notice that the same, I don't have the same number of blocks that start or end on a light or dark fabric. Last week when we were making the blocks, I kind of talked about that. I said, if you start with a dark center, it doesn't mean you're gonna, your last log is gonna be dark. It doesn't mean your last log is gonna be light. So in other words, if you're making half of the blocks starting with a, a light center and half of the blocks starting with a dark center, that's a good place to start. But you might have an uneven number of blocks. Let's say if you're making you know, 20 blocks, well maybe 18 of them have a darker outer ring and maybe, uh, what's, <laughs> what's 
uh, what was I say? Oh, 20. Let's say, let's say eight of them have a darker ring on the outside and let's say 12 of them have a lighter ring. Or if you're making 40 blocks, you know, maybe it's not half and half. Don't worry about that. Just let it go naturally. Some of you guys are making extra improv blocks. Notice all my little wobbles and bobbles and my imperfect blocks where I have little pops of color because I needed to add more fabric. That is totally fine. So the idea here is when you're laying out your blocks, Put them into position, you know, offset them with your partial blocks, but don't be afraid to move them around, rotate your blocks and see what goes good together. And again, it's not a light, dark, light, dark formation. You're just putting them in an aesthetic you know, aesthetically pleasing. So you can find, you can find blocks next to each other that are touching with dark on the outsides. But because of the way this um, quilt is laid out, you know, two blocks are not touching on all four sides and you also don't really have seams to match up. So again, it's very fair for you. And that's kind of what I'm trying to tell you about that. Um, going down here, I wanna show you this picture of me just sewing the blocks together. You're still gonna sew your blocks together using quarter inch seams. You can use pins if you want to. I like to press my seams open because it makes it nice and flat. The other thing that I will do is when, once I chain sew, like what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up two pieces, two blocks, and I'm gonna sew them together. And I'm gonna do that for as many pairs as I have. So I'm gonna sew two blocks and two blocks and two blocks, chain piece in between. Then I'm gonna cut this off of my machine. And with those pairs, I'm gonna press those seams open. Then I'm gonna sew the pairs of two together into a set of four and so on and so forth until I have enough um, rows that I need to make. Each time I sew, I'm going to stop and press because that makes the bulk less. Like I don't want eight blocks sewn together and then have to you know, press this huge line of sewing. I wanna press two blocks at a time. Then if I sew two blocks together and I have a row of four blocks, then I'm gonna press that. So I'm gonna press my seams as we go to make it easier. Here's just another picture, another little close up where again, you can see that I'm not too stressed about where the fabrics go. If two of the same fabrics are touching, that's okay. You wanna create a nice balance. But again, I've been for 10 minutes, I'm getting across the point that it doesn't matter. Don't overthink it, it's gonna look great. Here's a picture of the finished top just kind of on my, my backyard before we started building the pool. And again, you just want that really fun smattering of color, you know, lights and darks together, follow the diagrams in the pattern. So there's not a whole lot to talk about this because that's basically what you're doing. You're just putting the rows together. But again, going back to my kind of flat shot that you can see here, when you're sewing these uh, together, they are in vertical rows or columns. You're not sewing them together in horizontal rows because of those half blocks. So if you want to maybe like rotate it like 90 degrees, you can think about, you know, you can think about it that way. If I were to rotate this picture, then it would be horizontal. But instead of sewing them together, like in horizontal rows, I just pick up two at a time. And if I get lost, I can, I can uh, sew a couple blocks, press them, put them back on my design wall. But your design wall and your camera is your best friend. So that's just kind of a quick down and dirty. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, hopefully, and then come back. So again, the quilt is behind me, you know, not a whole lot of actual teaching happening because it's just sewing the blocks together, but ex explode it, meaning when you're putting your blocks on your design wall or design floor, lay them out with some space in between so you can kind of visualize how those blocks are going together. And so with, with that, um, I'm gonna now open it up for questions. I'll give it a minute because I know there could be like a delay between questions and comments and I'm gonna, just kind of double check, make sure I haven't missed any comments. I know Michelle had a fun little trunk show, which was really, really cool, um, really, really amazing. But this is, like I said, this is the throw size. Um, the throw size is my favorite. Um, I didn't pull up the screen to, um, for the exact size of it, but it's somewhere around like 64 by 80, um, somewhere around there. Um, one tip I'll give you guys, like let's say you're gonna make, um, you wanna make a larger size quilt. And this has the crib size, the throw size and the queen size. So let's say you wanna make a king size. All you need to do is measure the size of your bed and measure the drop off like on the mattress, like how far you want it to drop down and then kind of round that up a couple inches to give yourself some wiggle room. Because what I've noticed is the larger the quilt is when you quilt it densely, like I like to do, it's gonna shrink up a little. It might shrink up in, up in the wash. So let's say for example, you wanna make a, um, a king size quilt that's 108 by 108. I would try to make your 
quilt, maybe 112 by 112 and give yourself a good four inches of shrinking. Um, if you're making like a queen size or a twin size, maybe give yourself a couple extra inches. And sometimes the math is going to work out in such a way that maybe you need one full block or two full blocks. You can also add borders. Um, I like to usually do quilts without borders, but you can add a floating border. So you could get some of your leftover scraps or you could purchase some of the low volume light fabrics and just put like a three or four inch border around the whole thing then the design will look like it's floating. So there's lots of tips and tricks you can do if you want to change the size of it, if you want to add borders, make it bigger and things like that. Oh, I love, uh, you said love the red block on the third row, uh, two different fabrics on the greens. Yeah, exactly. I really didn't overthink this. While I was working on my blocks, I just kept all my fabrics together and I was just like, oh, I'm going to use this fabric and I'm going to use this fabric. And, you know, I, I tended to use a lot of the red and a lot of the green and not as much of the blue. So then the blue, there's going to be more blue on my background or my backing of my fabric because all of my leftovers I throw into that. So for this week, like I said, week three, you know, we're working on the quilt top. If you've just very started, you can hang on to this and go back later and refer to the images. Uh, next week we will, um, let's see, what are we doing? We're going to make the backing and I'm going to spend time make, showing you how to, I did a pieced backing. Then we're going to go through basting and I've already recorded uh, an actual video of me basting and I'm going to speed that up so you guys can see how I do my spray basting. And then we're going to do the quilting and the binding. So what is this? Week three. So week four is piece backing. Uh, week five is basting. Week six is machine quilting and week seven is binding. If I counted that correctly, I think that's how I'm doing this quilt along. Anyway, so I hope you guys are having fun making your modern law. Does anybody have any questions about this quilt? Does anybody have any questions about quilting in general? I know I don't stop and breathe, so you can just type in your question, and as I see it, I will answer it. Um, if you guys do have questions after the fact, feel free to come back, enter them on this post, and I will go back, and I will, um, I always get an, a notice when someone leaves a comment, so I can go back, and I can add more to it. So anyway, like I said, this is my studio. My design wall back there is, um, it's eight feet wide by eight feet tall. It's made out of uh, foam core boards that I stapled a, uh, a, a white flannel sheet to, and then we just hung it uh, directly to the wall. Then I've got a little quilt ladder here that has some of my quilts. I think some of you guys have made them. There's color weave, there's bling. This is blooming, wa uh, blooming wallflowers. These three are all individual patterns. And then this one down here is called dot and dash. That one's in my book, Piece and Quilt with Precuts. And I've actually done quilt alongs with all four of those. So if you go back on my blog, you can find quilt alongs to make all those blocks where I go through the entire process. And again, I try to keep these free for you guys. You just have to buy the pattern or the book, but the actual instruction, the tips, the cheerleading support, that's all here for you guys. So anyway, I'm glad you guys are here. Um, Val says, hi, new here. Quilt looks awesome. We're welcome to have you. Welcome to have you. And I'm just really happy about this. Um, for those of you that maybe are watching this and haven't made the quilt and want to do in depth, the quilt along itself is kind of, it's a little light and just a little more tips and tricks. Most of the information's in the pattern. However, I am gonna be actually teaching this class as a real class online for the Pacific International Quilt Festival, October 14th through the 17th. So I'm actually gonna go more in depth with some actual videos of me sewing and, and more, kind of more in depth. Like I said, the quilt along is kind of more, um, I'm, I'm leading it, I'm not teaching it. I know that's kind of a subtle difference, but if you want the actual class, I'm gonna do an online workshop for this class. Most of you don't need it, you can just follow along the pattern, but those of you that you know wanna be with people and wanna actually make the quilt in a actual uh, class online, you guys can join me for PIQF, Pacific International Quilt Festival, in October. And I'm also teaching two machine quilting classes online. Again, more in depth than the stuff that I share. Think of it this way. The free content I offer you is more like cheerleading support. Then when you're with me live um, in person or online for paid content, then that's more where like I'm the actual teacher role. But, you know, I'm here for you guys, whatever you need. A lot of you guys can get away with just, you know, the free content. That's totally fine. Then the paid content is a little bit more in depth. So anyway, that's a little tangent I went off on. So thank you guys for coming. Oh, hey, Seth. Hey, Julie. Good to see you guys here. Um, oh, I have a uh, Great explanation on the wall. Oh, a great explanation on the making. Oh yeah, on making my design wall on my blog. Pretty much, I just want to help you guys as much as possible. So yeah, visit my blog, kristaquilts.com. There's, I have been blogging since 2008, somewhere around here. So 
there's a lot of content on my blog, you guys. If you go back and you search binding, quilting, all this kind of stuff, you'll find tons of info. And it's, I just leave it out there for you to help you guys. So anyway, I think I got everybody's questions and comments. Um, those of you that are making your modern logs, please continue to share in my Facebook group and cheer everybody on. And I hope you guys have a great, wonderful rest of your day. Ta-ta for now.